Chapter 36, Flora The afternoon sunlight was a bit shy, as if it wanted to give some privacy to the hospital room that contained Flora and her mother. The sounds of lubricated engines and clanking metal were replaced with the gentle beep of the vital signs monitor. Three days had passed since the attack and her mother was in a coma. Flora was aching all over, partly from the trial, but also from the uncomfortable hospital room chair she slept on. The dust had settled over the city, and Flora had to wrestle with the new reality. Satello was fine, only a concussion. Mason had died. Clara had died. Darius's wife had died. Argent was still in the hospital after receiving reconstructive surgery on her leg. The city was adamant that the hope run still continued despite the disruption. Now it mattered more than ever in more ways than one. The ensuing chaos sent the public car markets into extreme volatility, the city uncertain whether the Hope Run would happen or not. While Cassidy and Satello were fine, Argent, unfortunately, would likely take a while to recover. There had been rumors that Flora might be chosen to replace Argent. It was difficult to imagine. Flora had already accepted her lot, and Argent needed this. She wanted to be a hero for her daughter. For now, Flora had to just wait. As for the revelations from Mason, it sent the city into its own turmoil. Social media was a buzz, people claiming that they had experienced lags in their transactions and claiming they knew about it. The Emmers denied it and claimed that Mason had an agenda against them, precisely because of the slow destruction of the mid-levels and trunks following the tax rate increase. Esper was still missing. She assumed he knew about the limiter, but wasn't sure how he discovered it. Wherever he got the information from, she wondered whether he convinced Mason to do it. If so, it pained Flora. Knowing that's the lengths Esper went to, to expose the truth. This could have all been avoided. Did Esper plan the attack? Putting everyone at mortal risk? The mere thought of it sent adrenaline and shock into Flora. She let Palma know what she saw during the attack, including mentioning that she did not tell Esper about the limiter. Following Clara's death, however, Palma had not replied. She was not sure whether it was grief or whether Palma was angry at her for switching off the mech stabilizer. The thought of it potentially contributing to Clara's death was a hard pill to swallow. It was all a blur, and she didn't know. So many thoughts. Her mother next to her was still critical, but stable. Like the dust motes suspended in the afternoon sun, Flora wanted to stay but she needed to tend to their home and get proper rest. She thumbed her mother's hair over her face. Flora paged through the events of the past few weeks. A small snowball of guilt had formed in her heart, especially considering that all her brave mother wanted to do was support her as best she could. Despite Madeira's remaining trauma from her husband leaving, she fought through it. Flora cried. Sometimes heroism was merely to get a second chance to face your own demons. Her mother didn't deserve this. A tear rolled down Flora's face, falling onto Madeira's shoulders. It reminded Flora of the tears she shed when she saw Armin run into the horizon more than a year ago. So much had happened. The next day, after getting a proper night's rest in their bus, Argent had asked to meet. Flora hoped that she would hear good news, that Argent was on the mend, and that with sufficient rest, she would be a hope runner. Flora had played again with the rumor to be the one that joined Cassidy and Satello to see her father. It felt like home being invited back in by her older self. However, she had a hand in this. Esper caused this. Argent feared that she would unravel if she did not run, and Madeira was in a coma. As she entered the hospital room, the smell of gauze, antiseptics, and flowers floated towards her. Argent's entire right leg was in a white cast, Despite Argent being incapacitated, her face looked healthy, glowing. I'm sorry I yanked on your leg as I scaled the dome, Argent said. Guess that's karma for you. No, please. That's just part of the competition. How are you? The morphine is really amazing, I'll have you know. <laughs> Flora chuckled. I'll give you the bad news first. It doesn't take a mech scientist to know that my leg is shattered. It will heal, but the rehabilitation will take months, if not years. Flora drew a short breath. I'm so sorry. She could see that Argent was trying to be confident, but this was clearly difficult for her to acknowledge. Argent coughed back more emotions. Oh, sorry, the medicine and all the flowers. Listen, 
There is some good news. I've been speaking to the Hope Runner's office. They've been wondering what to do. I've made it easier for them. I'm willing to give up the run if you win in my place. If it were up to me, I would have given you no choice. I'd have you walk out this room into a crowd of reporters. I know you, this would be a tough choice for you. And so that's why it might have been easier just to give you no choice in it. But although I think you need that, you don't deserve it. So I'm going to do the harder thing and ask you, Flora, please run in my place. At this point, Arjun's guard had fallen and she accepted the warm tears that came. A brave woman. Flora's tears also came. What about you? You said you feared yourself if you didn't win. Maybe I needed this to discover who I am without Armin. My daughter needs a hero, someone that's not afraid to face themselves. I was just being a coward, Flora. It's easier to run away than face myself. Oh, come on! Flora Cry laughed. It was all cliche, but entirely true. It's strange how crying and laughing can sometimes look the same. Do it for me, please. Flora wanted to, but she couldn't leave her mother behind. Her delirious cry laugh faded into a more serious tone. I can't. My mother, she's in a coma. I can't have her wake up and I'm gone. Even though her mother would have wanted her to run, she couldn't. Argent smiled faded away and she nodded. I didn't know, I'm sorry. It's okay, she is stable at least. She's a strong woman, she'll be fine, I know it. The apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Flora smiled at that. So what's going to happen now? Are they going to wait until you're ready or are they going to call up Darius? I hadn't thought that far, unfortunately. I suspect they wouldn't want to wait. They'll likely call up Darius. They are just being polite at this stage before, you know, throwing me by the wayside. Flora bowed her head. I'm sorry, Argent. I wish I could. She said as she moved to leave. Flora, wait. I don't know whether I'm just high on painkillers or whether such a life-changing moment changes one's perspective, but can you please just hold my hand for a little while? Flora felt butterflies suddenly flutter through her stomach. Flora moved back inside, pulled a chair closer, and held Argent's hand, caressing her fingers. For a minute, her mind was silent and she was at peace. Arjun's gaze was focused on Flora. Imagine if we were the ones running into the horizon. Flora had imagined that before. That would have been great, she said, turning her gaze to Argent. The Hope Runner's office gave me 48 hours to get back to them. If you change your mind, let me know, Argent said before closing her eyes in the comfortable afternoon sun. If Flora chose to run, she didn't know when she might have physical intimacy again. So she sat for a while longer, caressing and massaging Arjun's hands in the afternoon's warmth. 